along with us today and test your own science IQ. Let's meet today's teens. First from Longfields Elementary School, say hello to Olu Akeju, Wade Evans, and Andrew Ablor. And from Tulip Grove, say hello to Fallon Travers, Jerome Holness, and Allison Queen. And now here are the categories of questions we use on the Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green Things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body Systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing, and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. And here on the Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to the difficulty of the question. Easier questions worth 5 and 10 points. Tougher ones worth 15, 20, and ultimately 25, the toughest of them all. Both of our teams start out at 50 points. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. And at the end of the two rounds today, we will have a candidate to move on in our competition. Let's go over and make sure everything is working properly. Let's go to that red team. Wade, would you try your buzzer? It checks out A-OK. -okay. Good luck to you, to Olu, and to Andrew. And Jerome, how about the green team? Tulip Grove looks like it's ready and raring to go as well. Good luck to you, to Fallon and to Addison. Congratulations, guys, for making it this far in the competition. Let's have a super game. May the better team win. We go alphabetically L before T, so Longfields and Wade, let's play this game. Green things for 20. Green things for 20 points. Teams, a few plants can grow on the forest floor because the fallen leaves make it very difficult to see for seeds to do what on the forest floor? Germinate. Very difficult for them to Germinate. do what, Tulip Grove? Germinate. To germinate, absolutely. Germination is very tough, okay, because the conditions aren't right, and it's, that helps to keep the forest from getting too dense. Go green. Body systems for 15. Body systems for 15 points. Teams, there are two words that are near homonyms, abominable and abdominal. Abominable is a snowman. Abdominal are muscles in your lower torso. Spell abdominal for me, Longfields. Who's my speller? Andrew. Andrew, say the word for me, please. Abdominal. 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 Yes, sir. A B D O M I N A B L E. Ooh, not quite. Not quite. No. Nope. Tulip Grove. I need you to spell abdominal. Uh, yes. Abdominal. A B D O M A B L E. No. A B D O M I N A L. Abdominal. You keep can you put A B L E on the end there. Good try. No points. Go again. Green. Let's get physical for 15. Physical for 15 points. Teams, uh, there's a book out by Sam Kane called The Disappearing Spoon. It's all about the chemical element gallium, which is solid at room temperature. But if you take a gallium spoon and you stir your hot cocoa, what happens to it? Longfields. Starts to olu. It starts to liquidify. Starts to liquefy. It melts. Yes, it does. Good. Go red. Andrew, you're fussing with something over there. Is your microphone all right? Don't, you don't need to keep adjusting that, all right? Sorry, it fell. Okay. Is it all right now? I think so. Okay. We'll let you know if we have any audio problems there. I just didn't want you to be distracted here and miss some of the questions. Okay, go red. Let's get physical for 20. Physical for 20 points. All right, teams. Uh, a calorie is usually associated with diet and nutrition, but a calorie is actually a way of measuring the amount of this contained within food. A calorie is a measurement of what, Wade? Fat. Not fat. Tulip Grove, a calorie is a measurement, actually a measurement of this that is contained within food. Salt? Salt? Heat. Heat. It's a measurement of heat. Try again, please. Red. Zoop for 20. Zoop for 20 points. All right, team. Uh, the re 
reason why rodents aren't carnivores is because they lack these kind of teeth. What kind of teeth do you not find in rodents? Canines. Canines, that's right. There are no canines there, which would make them carnivorous. Nicely done. Go, Red. Um, zoo Parade for 25. Zoo Parade for 25, big one in that category. Teams up. Uh, Greta Thunberg, the young girl from Sweden who was named Time Magazine's Person of the Year, recently had a beetle named after her. So Greta is the species name, whereas the first name, as in any scientific name, is known as this G initial kind of name. It's a genus name, a genus and a species. Homo sapiens, boa constrictor. Go again, red. Zuparade for 15. Zuparade for 15 points. Teams, there is a famous Christmas carol about geese a laying and calling birds and swans a swimming. And then there was one of these in a pear tree. Tulip grove. A partridge. A partridge in a pear tree, that's right. Who can remember all those birds and how many of what each one did what? Go green. Body High score, 85 all, excuse me. Body systems for 10. Body systems for 10 points. Teams, if you're suffering from anosmia, you're not hard of hearing, you're hard of this sense, which is related to taste. Long fields. Yes, sir? Your smell? Smelling, that's right. You're hard of smelling if you suffer from anosmia. Nicely done. You pulled that one out. Go. Ten point lead. Body systems for 20. 20. Body systems for 20 points. Teams, the famous statue Venus de Milo looks like she's in need of two humerus bones, two ulnas, and two radii because she is missing both of her what? Wade. Hips. Not hip. No. God. No, the Venus de Milo statue. She's missing both of her what, which could be remedied if we got her two humeruses, two ulna, and two radii. Arms. Yeah, she's missing her arms, you know, that famous statue. And there she is, it's like, what happened to the woman's arms? All right, the buzz is this. We've come to the end of the first round. It's a good game. Tulip Grove's at 105. Longfield's right behind at 95. We'll be back with round two in just a moment. Wilson, a graduate of Bowie High School, class of 2009, and this is Prince George's County Alumni Spotlight. So my full-time job, I am still in Prince George's County, and I am the Community Outreach and Special Projects Coordinator for Council Chair Danielle Gleros of District 3. So once upon a gown, it is an initiative to support students without financial means, to give them access to gowns, shoes, accessories, in preparation for prom and special events. And we create a shopping experience for them to come in, try it on, get to feel really good in something, and then go home and be able to go to prom or go to that special occasion without having to spend a whole lot of money on something you might just wear one. I did an event similar to this in Brooklyn. We are so proud of these young people here. They've won once previously, and you can see why. They know their stuff, they know their science, and they know how to collaborate and talk to each other. Let's find out a little bit about them. If you didn't meet them the last time, let's introduce them to you now. Wade, over at Longfields there, your principal. Who's your principal? Ms. Bell. Ms. Bell, and I know she's here. She's rooting for you guys. And Ms. Bear is your wonderful coach. And you've got a couple alternates, or at least one. Who's the alternate? Um, Deontay and Ava. Wonderful. They'll be out in just a few moments' time here. And you told me how much fun it is to be at Longfields, yeah. that the teachers really care about you. And uh, so you're obviously at a very good place there. Um, you've got to be star students because you're proving that. What do you want to do someday, Wade? I want to be a football player, and if not that, a lawyer. Yeah, because we, we were talking about that, and Wade loves to argue. And he tells me he wins his arguments. So uh, being a lawyer sounds like a good career path for him. Andrew, nice to have you here today, and uh, you're interested in a lot of different things, but what I remember most of what you told me last time is you want to make money. That's yep. part of the American dream. It's yep. nothing to be ashamed of. In fact, that is, that's what drives this country. And how do you intend to make this money? 
Well, I'm gonna. Well, <laughs> well, I'm just gonna do what other people do. Just work for it. Yeah, and just work harder at it. Exactly. They say if you build a better mousetrap, people will build beat a path to your door. So take something that maybe is familiar and change it, and uh, you'll have people eating out of your hand. Wait, uh, what? And I know you like to watch Science Bowl. You've told me that before. Yeah. And that accounts for so much of what Andrew knows here today. He's an outstanding young man. And Olu, you'd like to be a chemist, you told us before. Yeah? Yeah. Yep. And have you done any chemi chemical experiments um, that you can tell us about? Had you ever heard of the uh, gallium spoon that melts at uh, almost uh, room temperature? No. No, it's, it's kind of a parlor trick thing. It's like, what happened to that spoon? It was solid a moment ago. Good to have you back. Philip Grove, nice to have you guys back with us as well. Jerome, uh, Miss Jamie Whitfield Coffin is here, your principal and your wonderful coach. Who's your new coach? Mr. Allen. Mr. Allen, Mr. Sean Allen. Continuing a family tradition because his dad, Robert, is a longtime coach at Magnolia, and he's here today as well. Uh, told me about Philip Grove before, all the wonderful things that go on there, also wonderful teachers, and uh, it's a, almost a brand new school. What do you like best about the brand new school? Um, I like the flowers that when you enter the building, you can see the plants on the door. Yeah. Uh, Philip, isn't there a slogan there? Philip Grove, where children bloom? From great to exceptional. From blo when children bloom, from great to exceptional. Exactly right, yeah. And you're a wonderful examples of that. Any alternates on your team, Jerome? I know you've got a couple. Yes, we have Elizabeth, we have Julia, and Jonathan. Wonderful. And they'll be out in a few moments with your principal. And your principal designed those matching shirts, right? Yes. Those great science shirts that you're wearing over there. Yeah, you dress the part today. You guys look terrific as well. Uh, tell me what you want to do someday, Jerome. Um, I want to be an astronaut mostly. Really? Yes. Would you like to travel back to the moon? Because we Americans haven't been there in a while. Would you go to Mars? Yes, wow. Mars. That'd be a long commitment to get there and then try to get back. It uh, takes a lot of courage, but you know, uh, you're know, you going to live long enough to see great advances in space travel. So uh, I'm going to keep my eye on you. I'm going to say I remember him when. Addison, nice to have you here today. Tell us uh, why you want to be on this show. Well, I, I like science, and I've been in STEM club since I was in first grade. Yeah. So um, I figured that Science Bowl would be a nice fit for me. It is a nice fit for you. And you told me on another show that uh, you're interested in cosmetics, yeah. developing your own cosmetics. And uh, as we were sharing then, it's a lot of chemistry. So a lot of science is going to come to bear on that. And Fallon is here, and she, uh, she has been here before. And what do you like about the show? I like the challenge because you never really know what questions you're going to get, so you really have to train for each one. Exactly. And hopefully the questions tap into some things that you're familiar with so that they're answerable. As, as you learn in my business, anybody can ask questions that nobody can answer. There's no fun in that. you got to come up with questions that are challenging, that they are, it's possible to answer them. What do you want to do someday, Kelly? Because I know you have a lot of talents. I can't really decide between marine biology and being a cardiac surgeon. Marine biology. Have you been scuba diving or snorkeling ever? No. You know, you've got to do that. You know, if you want to have a career in marine biology, you've got to get down there in the water and maybe not get inside the car shark cage. I don't know I would do that either. But find a place where it's a little safer. Let's get back to the game. 95 for Longfields, 105 Tulip Grove. Lots of points to give away. And Jerome, start us out. Science Popery for 15. Popery for 15 points. Teams, this man not only invented the light bulb, but also the record player and the phonograph and the records that were played on them. Tulip Grove. Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison would be he. Absolutely right. Good answer. Go. Let's get physical for 25. Physical for 25. Big one in that category. Teams, the last chemical element on the periodic table that occurs naturally is number 92 with the symbol U. Longfields. Pastor Olu. Olu. Uranium. Uranium. My chemist came through for me. Yes, sir. Good. Go. Rick. Um, Dateline science for 15. Dateline for 15 points. Teams, look at the monitor in the studio, if you would, please. 150 years ago, a scientist by the name of Robert Hooke looked through an old microscope at a section of cork from a tree and noticed that the cork was arranged in tiny little boxes for the first time ever. He said, all living things are made of what? Tulip Grove. 
Adams. Not Adams. Good try. He looked at that picture and said, all living things are made of, what are those little boxes? Um, bones? Cells. Cells. Go again, red. Um, green things for 15. Green things for 15 points. Teams, all nuts can be eaten, but the shells around nuts cannot be eaten and are described by what, with what I initialed word, meaning you can't eat them. Long fields. That's the Olu. Olu. Inedible. Inedible, yes sir, good, red. Green things for 25. Green things for 25, big one in that category. Look back to the monitor please in the studio for this question. You know, there is a kind of apple called the opal apple that if you cut it, it does not turn brown. But here you can see a brown section of apple. That happens when the apple tissue is exposed to the air. Some people call it rust. What O initial process causes that browning to occur? O initialed tulip grove. O. Mm, not coming to you. Longfields, any idea? It's called oxidation. Oh. It's oxygen affecting that tissue. That rust is another name for oxidation. Go red. You have a 15 point lead. Wade. Um, body system. Uh, no, zoop rate for 10. Zoop rate for 10 points. All right, teams. You know, adolescent animals, kids, what are you going to do with them? Young elephants, young wolves, young human beings, they test things, they do stupid stuff. A lot of times it's because they respond to this kind of pressure. Long fields. Peer pressure. Peer pressure, exactly right. Good. Go. Um, science potpourri for 20. Potpourri for 20 points. Teams, your question is as follows. In the Peanuts comic strip, Peppermint Patty told the teacher the day she was to deliver her dinosaur report that her report would be on the dinosaur bronchitis. The teacher said, don't you mean brontosaurus? And she said, oh yes, because bronchitis is actually a condition that affects which of our body organs? To the growth. Your lungs. Your lungs is right. Yes, good. Green, go. Science potpourri for 25. Potpourri for 25 points. Big one in that category. Teams, what letter of the alphabet is both a vitamin and the chemical symbol for potassium? What letter of the alphabet? Long fields. It's C. Not C. K is right, indeed. Good. Good answer. Go green. That puts you into the lead. Body systems for 25. Body systems for 25 points. Teams, Russia's Tsar Nicholas II's son, Alexei, famously suffered from hemophilia, a disease that manifests itself in what happening? What happens if you have hemophilia? Yes, Tulip Grove. High-pitched voice. Say it again. A high-pitched voice. No, no. Longfield's any idea about hemophilia? It's the bleeder's disease. If you're cut, bleeding does not stop. Go again, please, green. You have a 20-point lead. Dateline signs for 20. Dateline for 20 points. Teams, uh, Elon Musk's company is looking for a new supply of this chemical element for making all the electric car batteries that he will need. All right, Wade. Pass to Olu. Olu. Acid. Not acid. What kind, no, what chemical element is he looking for to make all of the electric batteries that he's going to need for his cars? Lithium. Lithium, like lithium ion batteries that we use for all of our devices. Go again, green. Green things for 10. Green things for 10 points. Teams, if you eat a rutabaga or a carrot or a potato, you're eating what part of those plants? What part are you eating? Pass the bulb. The bulb? The what? The bulb? Not the bulb, no. <laughs> what part of the plant the are you eating if you're eating the carrot or the potato or the rutabaga, Wade? Um, Pastor Andrew? The fruit? The root. The root. Those are all root vegetables. Try again, green. Dateline signs for 25. Dateline signs for 25 points. Teams, Christina Koch just made history. She is the American woman who has spent more time in space than any other woman. They are thinking that she could be the first woman to walk on the moon, meaning she would be right up there with what man who first walked 
on the moon. So let's bro. Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong is right. Yes, sir. Go green. Um, let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical for 10 points. James, your question is as follows. You know, in Peter Pan, Tinkerbell sprinkled the fairy version of this. But astronomers say we, all people, are made up of this that comes from the stars. Long fields. Dust, Andrew. Dust. Dust. Yeah, we're made of stardust. That's it, Andrew. Go red. Science potpourri for 10. ten. Potpourri, 10 points. Here's your question. On Sesame Street, the character Julia suffers from an A initial condition. Yes, Jerome. Autism. Yes, yeah, she has autism indeed. Go green. Dateline science for 10. Dateline for 10 points. Teams recently. Uh, George Lauren died at age 94. He is best known for developing the UPC, the Universal Product Code that we see on everything we buy. It is otherwise known as this code. So let's go. The barcode. The barcode it is. Yep. Go. Dateline signs for five. Dateline for five points. In Frozen 2, Queen Elsa magically manipulates what two frozen things? Andrew. Water? Mm, no, no. What two frozen things does she manipulate, Philip Grove? Ice and snow. Ice and snow, exactly right. Go green. Science potpourri for five. Potpourri for five points. Teams, if you're playing football, Wade, and you've scored a touchdown, you go over and you might want to bump your friends. What body parts do you bump? Your chest. Your chest or your fist. Chest bumps or fist bumps. Go red. Green things for five. Green things for five points. Teams, the, teams, the last book Dr. Seuss wrote in 1995 was about a little girl, Maisie McGrew, 12 years old, who had one of these flowers with big white petals and a yellow center growing right out of the top of her head, Longfields. Daisy. Mm -hmm. The daisy. That daisy head Maisie is right. Go red. Root parade for five. Root parade for five points. Teams, if you read Moby Dick, you learn an awful lot about what mammals. Whales. Whales is right, yes. Two left, yes, sir. Body systems for five. Body systems for five points. At an NHL hockey game, if there's a fight, pretty soon the ice is littered with a trail of bicuspids, meaning what's all over the ice? Salt. Not salt, Water. body systems. Water. Teeth. Teeth. Yeah, their teeth knocked out. Yeah, Fallon's going, oh my gosh, that's an awful sport. <laughs> Let's get physical for five points. Last question of the game. All that glitters is not this. Gold. gold. We've had a golden time here today, but it looks like by a few points, Tulip Grove is moving on in the competition. We'll be right back. Don't go away. our administrators and our alternates and our coaches come on down to the studio please thank you Dad, are you sure you don't want to get up there? All right, all right. Where's Ava? Is Ava back? There's Ava. And Deontay is still here with us. Thanks, Deontay, for staying all afternoon here with us. Okay. <coughs> and we're back in five, four, three, two. We knew we were going to have a great game, and that's exactly what we got. Six outstanding young people here. And toward the end, it was just so close, testifying to how well these young people play our game. Our final tally today, look at this score. Longfields 175, Tulip Grove 215. Congratulations to the team over there with the matching shirts.
Fallon and Jerome and Addison and way back there are the alternates Elizabeth and Julia and Jonathan. Their wonderful principal Jamie Whitfield Coffin is there and their new coach Mr. Sean Allen over there whose father is in the studio but did not want to intrude on his son's big moment here. Nice round of applause for the Tool of Grove team. <laughs> And this would not have been a game without these young men over here. Andrew and Wade and Olu, what a game they played. And Ava and Deontay, I know how proud you are of them. Here is Miss Bell. She is here uh, supporting their wonderful team. And Miss Bear, thank you always for sending us a great team. Another round of applause for this Longfield team. <laughs> we thank you for being with us today on the Science Bowl and hope you'll join us again. Until then, I'm Dave Zarin. See you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>